string theory hasn't been doing all that well recently, but a single man might just have saved it with an ambitious new idea. Let's have a look. String theory's great appeal is that it's based on an incredibly simple idea. Everything is made of strings, little strings that vibrate, split and merge. The strings themselves aren't made of anything else. They're fundamentally what nature is built up of. Simple, elegant and wrong. Trouble is that while the idea sounds appealing, the maths doesn't comply. If you try to build a consistent theory for strings, the universe you get doesn't look like ours. We've known this for a long time, but in the past decade, the conflict between string maths and reality has been given a new name, the swampland problem. You see, there are many ways to build string theories. Some of them work at all energies, some don't. The ones that do work at all energies are candidates for a theory of everything, and they make up what's been called the string theory landscape. Then there are those that don't have this property, that break down at some energy, and those form the swampland. So the swampland's full of string theories that might appear like they work, but ultimately don't, M much like my high school letter. Each of these theories gives rise to measurable quantities, like for example the rate at which the universe expands or some properties of the cosmic microwave background. The problem is now that the string theories that are compatible with our observations are those in the swampland, that is, those which can't be theories of everything. This is quite a bummer for string theorists. Either the theory can consistently unify all the interactions, or it agrees with observations, but not both. What to do about this has been hotly discussed among both string theorists and cosmologists for a decade. There are those who say we shouldn't worry about the theory not being good at all energies, because any theory is better than none. And then there are those who say we need to find a way to modify string theory so that the disagreement between reality and theory disappears. The author of the new paper, Eduardo Gundelmann, is in the second camp. He says he's found a way to escape the swampland problem that's haunted string theory for over a decade. He suggests that there's a reasonably simple way to reconcile theory with experiment, which is by acknowledging that the tension of strings isn't always the same. The tension of a string is loosely speaking its rigidity. It's how much the string resists being stretched. In standard string theory, the tension of all strings is the same. It's a fundamental constant. Indeed, in string theorists' wildest dreams, all constants of nature derive from just the string tension. The author of the new paper now promotes the tension to a dynamical variable on its own, one that depends on energy. And that basically creates a transition from the swampland that's compatible with observations at low energy to the good string theories at high energy where all the forces are unified. In a nutshell, he says, string theorists can have their cake and eat it too. What are we to make of this? On my bullshit meter, I give it a 10 out of 10. I think there's zero chance that this has anything to do with how nature works. It's yet another fix for a theory that's failed over and over. So why am I telling you about this? For one thing, I see it as my task to inform you about what's going on, whether or not I approve of it. But I'm also telling you this to remind you that even though I rarely talk about it, this type of nonsense research is all over the foundations of physics. The swampland craziness has now produced almost a thousand papers, and rest assured that a decade from now it'll all be forgotten like the firewall craziness from a decade ago. Don't remember that? Well, that's my point. It blows my mind that this keeps going on, that people are getting paid for what's so obviously pseudoscience. 
this isn't how science works. There is the possibility that I'm just too stupid to recognize the value of this research. I don't mean this sarcastically. I sincerely acknowledge the possibility. Maybe I'm missing something, like a few relevant brain cells. But today, I'm convinced that in 30 years, physicists will look back at what happened in the early 21st century and be very embarrassed. If you ever get the feeling that the news is more about storytelling than facts, Ground News is worth a look. Ground News is a news platform for people who value facts. They collect and summarize news, which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Have a look, for example, at the recent news that the Trump administration removed some major climate reports from the official website. You see right away that this news basically hasn't been covered by the political right, which I find somewhat disturbing, but it also tells you that information bubbles are real. They also give you a factuality rating for each news item and you can see where the news has appeared. Ground News also has this great feature called Blind Spot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. I found it to be super useful for checking whether a story is being blown out of proportion, ignored or distorted. And of course I have a special offer for you that's a 40% discount on the Vantage plan which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use my link ground.news Sabine or scan the QR code so they'll know I sent you. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow.